In this lesson, we'll explore how to render black gold, create your own personal color library, draw circles, cutting shapes, setting the line thickness and colors, fill objects with color, and create drop shadows. In the vertical toolbar to the left, we'll select the ellipse tool by clicking on it with our mouse. If you can't see the ellipse, put a rectangle or another shape. You just need to click on the little arrow in the bottom right corner and the different shapes available will appear. To set the dimensions of our ellipse, we'll click on the page with the left button on our mouse. In the box that appears, we set the width to 2.5 cm and leave the height at 2.5 cm and click on OK. As we move forward, when I say click with your mouse, it's always with the left mouse button, unless I specify that it's with the right. To get a closer look at the circle, we select the Zoom tool from the vertical toolbar to the left and click with the mouse in the area we want to zoom. If you get too close and want to zoom out, you need to press down the Option key as you click on the mouse if you're using a Mac or the Alt key if you're using Windows. Then we go and click on the black arrow at the top of the toolbar, which is called the Selection Tool. With our circle selected, and we know that it's selected because it has a blue square bounding box around it. When you practice to do this by yourself later, if your circle isn't selected, you simply click on it once with the Selection Tool, and the blue bounding box will appear. Now we head up to set the stroke thickness to 0.25 points which is a perfect thickness if you want to have very fine lines for files to print. If you go smaller, the lines usually result a bit jagged and weak when printed. Then we click on our circle and copy it by pressing the Option key if you're using Mac or the Alt key if you're using Windows, while dragging the circle with the mouse. We'll let go of the mouse and the keys when we're happy with the position and repeat it again to make another copy. We'll always use the selection tools to select, copy, or move our shapes around. Now that we have three circles, we'll select them by dragging the mouse over them and drag them towards the top center with the mouse. With the circle still selected, we make another copy by dragging them down with the mouse while pressing the Option key for Mac or the Alt key for Windows. Then we copy a third row. The pink arrows that appear are telling us that now we have the exact same distance between the rows. Now we copy and drag the last row, leaving the same distance between all four rows. To center the circles on the page, while still keeping the distances we've created, we select them all by dragging the mouse over them. Then we go up to Object and select Group. This turns all of our circles into a group of items. Now we head over to Align on the right side and select Align to Artboard. And then we click on these buttons to center our group in the center and the middle of the page. Then we go back up to Objects and select Ungroup. If you can't see the Align area in your workspace, you can make it appear by going up to the top menu Window and then click on Align. We're going to use these circles to render the four main precious metal colors. Our first rendering will be a blackened, high shine gold disk. To get a bit closer so we can see the circle clearer, we'll select the Zoom tool. Then we click on the Selection tool and click on our circle to select it. To put a color inside the circle, we go up to the white square and click on the arrow next to it. And we select the default black and white gradient color by clicking on it. And you can see that the circle immediately fills with color. To make the shading the way we want it, we need to modify it. So we'll click on the Gradient tool in the left toolbar. And you can see this linear handle appearing in the center of the circle. As we hover over the end of the handle with the mouse, the circle with an arrow appears. By clicking on it with the mouse and dragging it, we can rotate the color shading. To place the color inside of the circle, we click with the mouse in the center of the gradient handle and drag it to the center. Then we go over to the right side in the gradient area. To make our surface look flat, we make sure that our gradient is set to linear. To modify our color, 
We'll start by clicking on the black box and dragging it with our mouse. Under it, we have a swatch library. If you can't see the gradient or color swatch sections, you can make them appear by going up to the toolbar at the very top, selecting Window, and then clicking on Swatches, and then Gradient, and they will appear. From the swatches, we'll pick the colors that we want by clicking on them with the mouse, dragging them up and dropping them in the gradient. We'll fine-tune the gradient by moving our color boxes around until we're happy with the result. We can also copy color swatches in the gradient area by clicking on a color with a mouse and dragging it into the new position while pressing down the Option key for Mac and the Alt key for Windows. Any swatches that we don't want, we'll simply click on them with the mouse, drag them down and drop them and they'll disappear. We've now created a nice black and high shine gold color. When rendering high shine metals, it's important that you leave areas of reflective light. To be able to easily reuse this metal color for future shapes, we'll save it by clicking on the arrow next to the swatch. Scroll down and then select Add to Swatches. Here in the Swatches section, we'll double click on our new color and give it the name Black Shiny Gold. Most metal surfaces in jewelry have smooth edges to make them comfortable. To create the effect of smooth edges, we need to add a shadow and highlight to our disk. Let's decide that our light source will come from the top right corner. As a first step, we'll copy the disk by clicking on it with the mouse and pressing down the Option key for Mac or the Alt key for Windows while dragging it. Then we make a second copy, making it slightly overlapping, and select both of them. The next step is to head over to the Pathfinder and press this button called Minus Font. We've now created a new shape, which is the volume that remained in between our two disks. If you can't see the Pathfinder in your workspace, you can make it appear by going up to Window and clicking on Pathfinder. In the Swatches section, we set the fill color of the shape to be white. We need to make sure that we first select the full square in the top left corner in the swatch area, and then we select the white color underneath. To set the outline color, we need to first click on the outline square, and then we'll set the color to none, which is this white swatch with a red line across it. Now we take our highlight and drag it over our disk. To shape it the way that we want it, we just squeeze the corner of the selection box a little bit. On the opposite side, we need to make a shadow, so we'll repeat the same exercise by shifting the position of the disks, leaving a half moon shape in the bottom between our disks. For this shape, we'll set the outline color to none, select a dark gray fill color, and move it on top of our disk. and pull the corners of the selection box a little bit to get it into the right place. In the second circle, we'll create a high shine black and gold ball. Since we just made a nice flat gradient for black gold and we want to keep them the same color shades, we'll first select the circle that we want to render and then we go over to the toolbar on the left and click on the eyedropper. This is a great tool that helps you mimic the properties of other shapes. In the gradient section, we change the type to radial, and you see how the shading becomes circular. To make the gradient perfect, we need to then move and modify it by manipulating the color swatches, leaving a field of light outside and at the top center. Now that we're happy with the color, we save it to the swatches just like we did for the first swatch. Our third circle will render in satin, black and gold. So we'll select the circle and copy the shade of the high shine ball with the eyedropper. 
Satin surfaces are more opaque, so we'll manipulate the gradient by removing most of the light reflections. We still want to keep some, but we'll make them subtle. Now that we're happy with the result, we save the swatch and call it Black Opaque Metal Ball. To give our metal disc and balls a final three-dimensional look, we'll add a shadow. First we select our flat disc and group the three shapes by pressing down the Command and G keys from Mac or the Ctrl and G keys if you're using Windows. If we don't group them, the shadow will appear under each shape and it will look really weird. To create the shadow, we select all three shapes with the selection tool and go up to the Effects menu at the top and scroll down to Stylize. Another menu appears and we select Drop Shadow. We want to keep the shadow small and very dark, so we'll leave these settings as they are, with an opacity at 75% and the X position at minus 0.03, the Y position at 0.03, and the Blur at 0%. And then we click on the OK button to confirm. Like you can see, a fine black shadow has appeared at the bottom left side of our shapes. Now we'll create a second, lighter shadow, so we'll go back up to Effects and select Drop Shadow again. This time we'll change the opacity to 35% and increase the distance to minus 0.15 and 0.15 and set the blur to 0.1. Before we confirm, we'll check how it looks by clicking on the preview box. The shadow is a bit too distant, so we'll decrease the offset to minus 0.13 and 0.13 before we hit the OK button. And voila! We now have a beautiful shadow effect that makes our shapes pop.